Welcome to the final demos for the Spring 2014 Hack and Y Student Hackathon. I'm proud to introduce you to my co-founder and co-organizer, Professor of Computer Science at NYU, Evan Korth. Okay, so we have a bunch of demos that are Oh uh, yeah. We have as many as 42 demos to go, so what we're going to do is we're going to get started right into the demos. For those students who are demoing, Whitney sent you an email that shows the order. What we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, the first one up is Cleanly, if you could come up here now. And uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to say who's going, who's on deck. If you're on deck, come right here. Chris, right here, is going to get you set up and then we're going to swap you in as quickly as possible. We're just going to go right through the demos, we'll make some announcements in between the demos. So it could Cleanly come up, and next up is Violent Food. Alright, so our app is called um, Cleanly, it's an ad Android mobile app, and how we did it is basically um, we used the uh, Handy, Handybook API and the Delivery.com API to um, basically whenever you want to clean your house and get it cleaned and you want to schedule it afterwards, like afterwards a party and um, you can do it easily with our app. So basically you would log in, so I'll just log in with my information here and it just asks for your first name, last name, um, where, where the event's going to be at, so um, I'll just put that in. So I'm going to put in like 235, uh, some typical New York address like uh, Park Avenue South. New York and um, New York State zip code one zero 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 seven and um, so right now I just put just put that in and then from there we're gonna choose the next uh, event date where we show off our a custom calendar that we have and we'll pick a date like uh, say like um, April twelfth and we'll choose that and it shows that it's uh, been chosen. And then from there we'll do uh, the event time where we'll choose the time. It's probably going to be at mm, pretty late, 10 o'clock, 10.19, whatever. And from there um, we'll tell them how many guests we, we're probably going to have expecting so they can know what to expect. So like we'll say like 15, not too many. And we will submit that. And from there, we have, um, they ask you, that you, you can talk if you want. They ask you how many um, bedrooms that you want cleaned. And we'll have maybe like one bedroom cleaned and possibly uh, one bathroom cleaned. And then they ask you what date do you want it on? Because you don't want people coming in cleaning during your party. So um, we'll just do it like next day after, like the Sunday after, probably like late Sunday. And um, if you want the quote, you click first on the thing, and it's fifty-five dollars. So if that's too expensive, you don't click again, and you just back off. Or if it's okay, then you just take it, click again, and it's booked. So that's really it for us. Okay. Thank you, yes. Cleanly. <laughs> okay. Next up is Violet Food, and on deck is. Guess the subreddit. So Violet Food, you ready to go? Oh, sorry, guys. Cleanly, before you leave, what school are you from? Carnegie Mellon. Carnegie Mellon. All the way from Carnegie Mellon. Cleanly, thank you, guys. Hi, everyone. I'm Danny. This is Jed and Kelly. We're from NYU, and we made Violet Food. So at NYU, clubs order food. That's the thing we do. Um, it's a bit of a pain to deal with the forms and just getting that food. So we made a thing to sort of streamline it. Hopefully be up in a second here. Ish. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So thanks. So yeah, so we used the well delivery.com and order and we were interested because they're gonna give part of their proceeds to whoever uses their app. You get well there's a little controversy because order in gives twenty five percent and no sorry, order in gives thirty percent while delivery.com only gives twenty five percent. So we'll see which one we can make more money off of and then pick that one to find the restaurants. Anyway, so let's say we have a uh, ACM meeting later today, and so we're going to figure out how much we want to spend. Let's say our budget is 250, so we'll put in 250. What kind of food are we feeling? Let's say 
We like Italian, and we have about 100 people. Great. So we want this delivered to Courant at, let's say, 8 p.m. Fantastic. Let's eat. So this goes to delivery.com and figures out, um, based on our location, and then how much money we're willing to spend, and it comes up with some menus. So then we can pick from these different restaurants which menus we like the most. Uh, we like the fact that we can get eight meatball Parmesan heroes from Two Boots to Go-Go. So we'll do that. We'll click there. It goes ahead and processes it, and here we go. We have our order summary, and we can also email our receipt. Let's say we want it, because we need to keep track of all our receipts, and so we can then send the email, and he'll get the order summary. Of course, not Okay. All right. Well, yeah. Great. But yeah. So thank you. And we all. Oh, sorry. One last thing. Uh, Kelly wrote a great thing where we can take the. Uh, the summary data from the receipt and then fill out a PDF from that. So at NYU we have to fill out these forms for um, every time you turn in a receipt and so this will uh, this will fill out the PDF form for you if there's sticklers and the email receipt isn't good enough. So they can also get a PDF attachment. And maybe we can even show you what it looks like. So I generated one ahead of time and already sent it. So you here you see a test email sent to my NYU email, and it has a PDF that's automatically been filled in with the various fields that the person would uh, add in when they sign up for our, our service. Great, thank you. Well, thank you. That is awesome. I hate those forms. Okay, next up is guess the subreddit. <laughs> and on deck is skip this shit. I assume that everybody's read the, uh, the Hack and Why uh, Python Code of Conduct. Yeah, go to this. Hi, uh, my name is Eddie Zaneski, and this is Kaushal Parikh and Will Langford, and we are from Rutgers University. Um, so we basically spent the entire time doing a shitty IT project, we had to make a BitTorrent client, and then two hours before hacking was over, we're like, crap, we should make something. So we threw this together in two hours, uh, hope you like it. So if you could all go here, dev 2 eddiezanecom On your phones, everyone. On, on your phones. We're going to play a little game. I'm going to play with you guys. So let's pull out our phones. Right, is everyone good? Give me a look up. All right. All right, cool. It'll just drop you in. So, what we're doing is we're pulling off a random picture from Reddit, and you have to guess which one it is on your phone using a voting device. So. All right, and as you vote uh, in real time, your the percentages are upload updating, and at the end, say like five, four, three, two, one. We'll give you an answer and. Well, it was our funny. The correct answer was funny. All right, let's play another one. Cool. Oh, one more time. There we go. All right. Salt patterns on a vibrating metal plate. We're probably out of sync. People are still voting. <laughs> there we go. This one might work. So this is earth porn. Earth Everyone's voting for Everyone's Earthporn. Voting for earth porn. And the correct let's answer see. is Earthporn. Earth right. Cool. Let's do one more. All right. Cool. It's a tarp. <laughs> it's a tarp. And all right, advice animals and it's funny. <laughs> so <Ooh>. that's our <laughs> hack. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the next team is something unpronounceable, and uh, that will be followed by roommate agreement. So please do uh, take the floor, let us know your school, and fire when ready. I don't know. Okay, we're from Fordham University, and um, we have the idea of uh, when you're at a party and there's a song and you got, you're not really a fan of it. Or you're at a hackathon and somebody put the music on and you didn't have any control over it. It's the worst. And um, so we had this idea that what if you could use the power of democracy to get a bunch of people on hashtag name of the playlist and then um, this application will scan Twitter 
and based on the number of um, occurrences of that hashtag on Twitter, it would skip the song. So if you were to actually tweet right now, hashtag skip this shit, it would actually start counting. So I actually encourage you, uh, <laughs> go ahead and tweet that hashtag, exactly how it's spelled. Uh, this is in no way fully developed. Yeah. <laughs> this is the presentation of an idea. But um, if right now we just have the player, and um, if you click this, it'll say, right now there's one tweet with hashtag skip this shit in it. Thank but, you. Um, sorry about the words. We yeah. missed that code of conduct. Um, but uh, <laughs> if you guys tweet that, and then sometimes it takes a little bit, but <laughs> then if you click it again, the number will go up, and that's how you can, to further develop this, use that number and manipulate the player better. And theoretically, we would use a reactive framework so that if Friday was playing right now, thank God it's not, um, yeah. We can do that. We get enough uh, hashtags, there would be a threshold. <laughs> no, I'm not <laughs> there, <laughs> There would be a threshold that would eventually skip the song once enough people democratically voted to end it. Sorry. Uh, do you want to refresh it to see if anybody else? Yeah, it did. It went to three. Oh, cool. All right, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. All right, next up is roommate agreement. And Flyer Penguin is on deck. Is Flyer Penguin here? Come on down over here. While they're setting up, I'll take this time to thank some of our judges. We have Mr. Eric Wu over here, Kathy Sun, Aditya McKinney, Derek Gottfried. Yes, so you can do arrangement here and do a mirror. And then. Uh, cool. So, hey everyone. Um, yeah, this is us. We're from Colombia. Uh, hope you guys are familiar with this, right? No? No. Never? No one? Really? Someone. What's that? Cool. Now? No, not even? Big Bang Theory. Cool. Nobody has heard of it. Um, so anyway, uh, we think that uh, we spend a lot of time just like fighting around with roommates, uh, seeing who gets to do what. And most of the time you go into the kitchen and it's like, it's a mess. Uh, there are like roaches all over the place. Mice are just about to invade your place. And everyone says, like, I didn't do it. I take out, I, I really, I took out the trash last, last week. So we tried that. I mean, we thought that we can just, like, uh, do it a bit better. So, uh, yeah, we, whatever. Uh, it's authentic, but it's, uh, so here you'll see, like, a, a lot of people. Uh, you'll have like your dashboard using different things and if you run out of like supplies when you're cleaning you can look for supplies around you it take it takes a while like the delivery uh, the com API but it's coming up so you can uh, find stores in the area you can get supplies so that you never run out of uh, cleaning supplies again uh, you can have like all your roommates, you can as uh, assign chores to them, uh, you can see your activities uh, and the fun thing is that you can actually document them, right? So if I go like with my mobile, uh, I can just go and click the picture of what it is the short that I am doing right now. However, if I'm cleaning the toilet, that perhaps is not the best way to go about it. So we thought that we could have like a better way to do it and Rohan's going to show you how. So we all know about before we dump as, uh, before we, before we used to pick up Reaper. and and use our phones, this is hands-free uh, solution which has like, which will definitely do it hands-free and this will be like okay glass, this will like document proof, it will take a picture, uh, this will automatically send it to the scheduler as well as to the server which will document, provide evidence that the person responsible to clean has done the service and it's supposed to be right so it's on the way yeah somewhere okay glass yeah you're doing a great job uh wrap it up though the next yeah uh sorry for that uh there you go this is you people so this is our short for the day, right? So we submitted, we documented, and that's our roommate agreement app so that no one has to fight over uh, who did who or who did it ever again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, sorry. 
Uh, next up is Flyer Penguin, and they would be followed by Fiesta House, which sounds like good times, good times. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Emily. I'm a Columbia student. I'm Michael. I go to NYU. Uh, this, is a flyer, this is a page I had to design a flyer for, an event I had to design a flyer for a month ago. Um, I always end up designing the flyers for every group I'm involved in. Um, so basically, we designed an app that if you try to print this, there's actually no like print an event option on Facebook, and if you hit Control-P, you get something really beautiful, which is this. Um, so we designed something called Fire Penguin, which lets you grab a Facebook URL, paste it in, log in. Oops, that's not my password. Uh, and then generate the flyer. Uh, so you have this flyer, but let's say I, I want to make some changes this is for people who can't design for their life. Uh, whoops. So let's say we have also have an address to add. Whatever. Um, change the time, remove text, um, and then you just hit, you can hit control P or the button up top, and you get it in flyer form. So that's the hack. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Fiesta House, and Tabs is next. Is Tabs here? Tabs, come on down. Yeah, can we do that this side? Okay. We're going to do the next group. They need to reset. Uh, okay, so they get a pass, and they'll come back. Fiesta House. Uh, so next will be Tabs, and then after Tabs will be Lucky and Pep. All right, my name is Matt, and this is Andrew, and we are freshmen at uh, RPI. Uh, and so we're trying to solve the problem of... Uh, having lots of tabs open in Google Chrome and a lot of my friends go crazy with tabs. I mean, you get into a project or you just don't close Chrome for a while and you just have a billion tabs open and uh, Chrome shrinks down the tabs to a really small size and you can't see what's on them anymore. Uh, so it's really hard to find stuff. So we tried to solve that by uh, making a Chrome extension uh, it's called tabs. So it uh, finds all the uh, the tabs you have open and groups them by the uh, domain. So uh, you can click on one to jump to it easily. Uh, you can close multiple tabs if you have a bunch of the same tabs open and you don't know that, you can close them all at once. Um, you can also close the tab you're on, hit the X button. Uh, so. Yeah. Um, and then, oh yeah, and uh, you can also close these tabs to, uh, you know, keep uh, only what you want in view and stuff. So, yeah, that's our hack. Okay, thank you, tabs. That was truly an insane number of tabs. Uh, so next, we'll be hearing from Pep, and then after Pep, Facebook Invaders and 2048 Against Cancer will be on deck. Uh, while Pep is taking the floor, uh, let's make sure and also thank all of the technical ambassadors who made this thing possible. So, so if you're a tech ambassador, just stand up so that we can thank you properly. Yes, thank you for our technical ambassadors. Technical ambassadors worked through the night helping people with all of their blockers, and many of them actually physically stayed here all through the night, which is pretty rad, and uh, helped people. Okay, so can everyone please go to these, this website right here? It's uh, kylry.github.io slash capital P-E-P. Okay, everybody got it? Yep. In the meantime, uh, I'm Kenan. I'm from Fordham University. And yep. I'm from uh, University of Rochester. And so we did this project called PEP. And PEP stands for Publicly Editable Pixels. And basically what we did is use Firebase, iOS, and JavaScript to update dots on a screen uh, live. So what you have here uh, we have two people, so we have Kenny, and then uh, we have another person in the audience who is editing this live, 
Uh, so this is an iOS app on the phone. And basically what it does is inter uh, interfaces with Firebase. So anyone can then edit the giant pixels on the screen uh, and turn the dots either on or off. So do you want to draw a smiley face? So this is actually updating live. Uh, one client on iOS, one client on JavaScript, and then it's updating with Firebase. So anyone with the app can then go and edit the dots on the screen and then make funny pictures. And Sam's in the audience. He also has the, the app. And he's just, so now Sam's drawing an S. And it's updating live, and it's really awesome. So yeah, that was our hack. We put it, it wasn't working two hours ago. And we got up this morning, had a cup of coffee, and now it works. So it's awesome. Coffee. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, next up is Facebook Invaders, and after that is 2048 Against Cancer. Hi guys, uh, I'll just wait for everyone to settle down a little bit. So Harry and I are traditionally back-end developers. We like systems programming, but today we decided to take a stab into front-end world, right? So what better way to take a stab at that than a statically typed language for front-end programming? So we decided to learn Dart today. And from Dart, we decided to build a little game to show you guys. We uh, spent most of the time breaking the Dart compiler and um, working on the game engine. But we were able to get something that you can see move around. So we're very excited to show you. We call it Spapesook Invaders. And we plan to capture the excitement of bootstrapping your own company and getting funded. For example, this is a demo from the full game. You're a strapping entrepreneur over here. You're moving around, right? And what happens is you need a pitch to an investor to get some funds, right? You can even see him shaking a little bit, how excited he is. You need to give him a good pitch. You need to send all these pitches to him and give him a good pitch. What's that? Well, that's your barrel roll. Your barrel roll is your ultimate protection tool. If you're disadvantaged, if you're not in the early 20-year-old stage or you haven't worked for a top technology company, then you know you have to deflect those accusations when they shoot them at you. <laughs> so the barrel roll is for defending yourself. And when I give the investor a pitch, he gets excited, right? That's very good. Excitation is good, but it's also very dangerous. Because if he gets too excited, he might try and come down and acquire me. I don't want that. <laughs> I, want, I want to get funded, right? So I just have to keep pitching him until he ran away. See, it was too risky, too high stakes. That happens in real life. So you just have to try again and restart the game. You always have to try and try until you finally succeed. And you just give those pitches after you get really good at them, and you land the investor. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, next up is 24-8 Against Cancer. Did you guys say what schools you're from? Oh, uh, we're from Rockers. Natch. Yeah. Oh, that was the nice. The group that we skipped earlier are ready to go again. OK, and that group is called? Her Fiesta House. OK, after 2048 Against Cancer will be Fiesta House, and then there will be Moat.2048. So yeah, um, Wayne like pitched that very well. But yeah, uh, so I'm Sam, and this is Fike, and we both go to Rutgers. Uh, I have a reputation around here for like making funny, less serious hacks, but uh, this time doing something a little different. Uh, I have a buddy named Tyler who has brain cancer, actually, and he's about to go through some like crazy experimental surgery, and they're trying to raise some money. So we decided, you know, we're hackers. We like solving problems. So we made a spinoff of 2048 that allows you to authenticate with Venmo and donate towards and Tyler. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, so authenticate. Authenticate. Or I guess I will, dude. All right, yeah, dude, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to get rid of all my Venmo money. So. <laughs> <laughs> so for every uh, key movement, you go left, right, up, down. You're donating Tyler a penny. Yeah. Every so sing every single movement, like, look, that's a penny. This is a penny. That's another penny. I'm like losing so much money here, but it's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so usually we spend hours a day uh, playing this game, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to donate a lot of money towards uh, Tyler and his yeah. treatment. All right, so that's like game over right there, and uh, I'm about to I'm about to pull out my phone and see like what the damage was. And you can all go to 2048againstcancer.com right now and play for yourselves. <laughs>
Oh, uh, okay. Too. Yeah, it makes okay. sense. All right, so I'm on Venmo right now, <laughs> and I just spent like three bucks, which is <laughs> actually pretty surprising. So if anyone can beat this with like less than five dollars spent, that'd be pretty badass. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, all all of you go play this right now and donate to my buddy Tyler. Yeah. Continuing our powers is two moat twenty forty eight. No. And we're gonna go back to Fiesta House. Back to Fiesta House, of course. Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, we created Fiesta House, an app that makes planning parties easy. Uh, it's super simple to use. You simply go uh, to the website. You can sign it with Facebook, so you can save your progress where, when planning a party. Uh, you just give a name to the party, like Heck and Why. Cool kids, I don't know. Uh, you put a name, a name and a time. So I have some a time here. And then uh, you put the address where you're going to throw the party at. And when you click proceed, then the app is going to use um, delivery.com's API to fetch some uh, food that you can offer to your guests. It's completely so you can, random. It's completely random food that uh, you can select. Uh, after you select your food, you proceed, of course, to one of the most important parts of a party, the booze. And so you get the options of also booze that gets uh, sold around your zip code, depending on the address that you input. Uh, once that's done, then of course, uh, for all the lazy people you can have uh, through, uh, what's the name of the API? Uh, Handbook, you can get someone to clean your house after your party the next morning. So if you, cl you click yes, uh, you'll finally be on the final step, which is uh, the checkout. And when you click submit, we're actually not going to do it, but um, this is what would have appeared there. You just booked a party for all your friends. That's pretty much it. Thanks, Fiesta. And did you say what school you're from? Uh, Columbia. Columbia. All right, so I think we're going backwards now or are we going forwards? You guys are Moat.2048? Yes. And by you guys, I mean this guy. OK, during this minute, uh, maybe I will thank uh, some of our other sponsors while we're waiting for audiovisual to come up. Uh, I'll thank our gold sponsors. Our gold sponsors this hackathon were MongoDB and Quotidian Ventures. Thank you very much to our gold sponsors, MongoDB and Quotidian Ventures. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Gil Gencion. I'm from Columbia University. Um, so I really like the game 2048. We all do. We've, we're, we have a bunch of hacks here today for 2048. But I don't like sitting by my computer all the time. Um, so um, I created a little Moat.io hack that you can play it through your phone. So I don't need to stand by my computer. I can project it onto the big screen. Um, and a cool feature is just uh, when you press the Options button, um, the reset will pop up, so you're not pressing reset accidentally. Um, so I, I find that really exciting. Um, and so I can press reset and it'll start over, so I never have to touch my keyboard again. See, I can do it over here. I can do it over here. I can even do it over here. Over here. Up. 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 We're gonna win. <laughs> okay, well thank you guys. You're lucky. You guys are lucky? Next up is Lucky and Hacka Team is on deck. Hacka Team here. Hello everyone. We are Lucky Team, and my name is Ron. This is Meng Yang, and this is uh, <laughs> Yue Po. Uh, and uh, we're making a Lucky app t for you. And do you guys feel bored every day, or do you guys hate to choose? And sometimes you feel too hungry to go out for dinner? And yeah, you know, you only live once. 
I mean, why always stay the same? You, you, you can always try something new, but、uh, it's hard to say when or where or how or something you where to how to choose the new restaurant or new dish. The most important, you are the chosen one. Yeah, you, you got. Let me show you what we have done. Yeah, this is the ultimate solution for you. This is our website, and you can enter everything there and enter your address there,、yeah. and we will generate. A secret order for you. That's yeah, that's、right. top secret. <laughs> yeah, that's pick from the restaurant near from your location, and at first you can't see what what you have ordered. Uh, that that's the most interesting part, I think. Because you were if you were brave enough, you can just click on the check out without know what's. Here, but if you are <laughs> just the real curse, what happening? You can just,、uh, I mean, wipe over here and see what was the order. Yes, yes, yeah, that's the. And you can place the order after you have seen what ha- what you have ordered.、And、Now let's、uh, show. So here, and the demo time. Yeah, this is some. Um. Is that? Uh, because of the, uh, let me refresh it again. Maybe because of the the extent screen. Uh, this should sh- this should be a button, and、uh, here we can uh, uh we can input anything we want like board, and then the here we can enter our address like、uh, anything we want, and then we click the I feel lucky. Then、at this time, I'm sorry. It's generating the best menu. Maybe we can generate for you. And、uh, this is the top secret uh, uh, of your order. And here,、yes, like、uh, three items. If you want to know what's it, you can just、uh, wipe it over and see what it. Oh, you don't care about it. You、yeah. can just uh, slow, uh, uh, slide down and、uh, and go to the checkout. I mean, yeah. Yeah. You can just、uh, click awesome and.、Uh, Yeah, but we'll submit this order to to the Orin, yeah, to the Orin API. If, but what if you feel this is not good for you? You want more lucky ones. You can click I feel more lucky and go back to the the the, the beginning. beginning. Of this yes,、yeah. and then you can add one more word, and this is the the same address. Same address, the same for saved for you, and then click I feel lucky again. Then we will generate a random order for you again. Here you did it. You can just. Uh, <laughs> you can just. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, because yeah. this this shop,、uh, this restaurant has a limited、uh, a minimum requirement for fifty dollars delivery, so we have to. So we have make our mind. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So let's order. Place this order. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, just to use anyone. Place order, then it's processing, and then calculations, and feel the power of random,、yeah. and feel the surprise of life. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, Captain is not here. Your new wingman. Are you guys your new wingman? Yeah. Okay. Then on deck is. Another mode I O twenty forty eight. Is 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 there? A, wait, did mode twenty forty eight just get excited and submit twice, or are there really two modes we're using? Mine. Okay, there are two. Ours is a little different. No doubt. <laughs> okay, you ready to go? Okay, while our audio visual is getting set up, let's also thank our silver sponsors who made Spring twenty fourteen Hack and Why Student Hackathon possible. Our silver sponsors were Andreessen Horowitz, BuzzFeed, Digital Ocean. eBay, Microsoft Research, and Nanotronics Imaging. Thank you very much, Silver sponsors. So we created a website that you log in with your、um, Foursquare, and we use the Foursquare API to pull down the 30 hottest bars next close to you. And、um, so when you click on a bar,、um, Uh, there you go.、Um, it shows the map and where it is,、um, and it does it for all of them. 
And then when you go to, it also says how many people are there right now. And then when you go to data, it shows an interactive graph that breaks down the gender of the people that have checked in there as well as the ages. And you can change it so it says what you would like to see. <laughs> and then they also have links for Foursquare and Yelp for the restaurant. We uh, also used Twilio, uh, so you pick out a good bar, you want to text your other friends, your other wingman who's going to go with you, so you send a text to your second wingman, and so it comes up on your phone, got it here, you can trust me, I'm not lying to you. Um, and then also, you're going to want to have some cool interesting things to say to the people who are there, so um, you have some cool tech trendy pickup lines. So you had me at Hello World. Uh, I'm following you on Twitter. I can also follow you in real life. <laughs> um, you are delicious. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically it. And yeah, please leave that here. And did okay. you say what school you're from? Oh, I'm from NYU. And uh, I'm graduating high school. All right, thank you. Okay, so that was, I'm sorry, which was that your new ming, wingman? Yep. Must have been. All right, so now we have Modio 2048, not to be confused with Mode dot 2048 Hi, so I'm Sean, I'm from uh, Juilliard, and this is Alex, and you're from? I went to Brown. Oh, she went to Brown, but she's French right now. So we made this thing called uh, a Mode IO 2048. So uh, there's two parts. First of, first of all, there's a Mode IO part. So as you can see on my phone, and I'm going to control it. See? I can be here too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, but anyway, uh, we also, but we're a little different because we also have multiplayer mode. So as you can see, you can see two of them at the same time. So uh, we're both playing and seeing who can get it first. Go play with us. Go to bit.ly slash modio2048. Hey! So yeah, you can see how everyone's doing. Oh, wow! And everyone's playing. And I'm playing on my phone. Go, go, go! <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you can see how you do against other people. I don't know who's going to win. Uh, but yeah. Hope you like this. <laughs> All right, next up is Tunnel, and after that is Text for Food. All right. So I'm Thomas, I'm from the University of Waterloo from Canada. Um, yeah, so I originally was going to make a app for um, for RDO, trying to bridge RDO and Spotify so you can get the social features from the two separate networks in one app. But I kind of ran into this issue with Chrome extensions, this really difficult technical problem uh, that I thought was way more interesting, so I solved that instead. Uh, so for anyone who's created Chrome extensions before, you kind of have these background pages. So for example, in Adblock, you know, it's its own separate web page. And then you have scripts that you can inject into a website, and then you have the actual JavaScript on the website. And they all run in separate virtual machines, which is a problem if you want to do like synchronized communication between them. So, um, so I created Tunnel, which is, uh, uh, until 24 hours ago, I didn't know, or it, it didn't seem possible that you could get an actual website to communicate with a Chrome extension and synchronize their communication. So an example is you can have, uh, I have a form here where you have the web page and you can send a message and it's received by the content script and the other way. So you're kind of asking, it seems really technical, um, you know, where, where could you use this? So I have an example of a, you know, typical blog that's, you know, infinite scrolling. And suppose you want to create an app that like, you know, replaced all the photos with Nicolas Cage. Um, you can do that, but the problem is, is that since the document, uh, the DOM is the shared memory, um, the website will update it and it won't notify the 
content script. It won't notify the uh, Chrome extension, which is a problem because you end up getting down here and you scroll and as you see, it's no longer Nicolas Cage. So with this other version of the site with my extension, my demo extension installed using this new technique that I developed, you can continue scrolling down and new photos load and it's just Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Nicolas Cage, yeah. So it's been brought to my attention that it could possibly be a big security bug in Google Chrome about this. The jury's so, uh, sort of out on that. I'm not 100% sure, but um, the code's on GitHub, so if anybody wants to take a look and uh, see if it's a security flaw or not, um, I'd be really interested in hearing from you. Thank you. Indeed, the jury's still out. Uh, okay, so that um, now we're going to have text for food, and then food fight and QR scanner. Please, would you come down to the hall? Did anybody travel from further away than Ontario? Ontario's the furthest away people that came here. Pittsburgh's pretty far. Okay, please, fire when ready. Let us know your school. Hey guys, my name's Hala. This is Michelle, Tav, and Addy, and we're from Stony Brook. And our app is called Text for Food. So basically, um, what this app is is an extension of a previous app we made about. Um, sorry, I'm like all up in the place. And it's, um, it's a previous app we built, um, helping you decide what to eat. So this is like an SMS extension. So basically, what you need to do is text your zip code and then text like a keyword of something you feel like eating and it will send you back a result of what's nearby that you could eat. So if you just go ahead and text that number, anything you put, Chinese, Mexican, whatever. And so, so we're going to try one out. So right this is basically what we're doing. We're I guess it's not that visible, but this is the number right there. And I have uh, entered a sample text, which is the zip code of our university, 11790, with the keyword Italian. And so I just send that. And in about a few seconds, I'll get a reply, which says, uh, once again, it's not visible on the screen, but we recommend KitchenAid Trattoria, located at 532 North Country Road, same chains, which is pretty close to the university. So basically, it just brings up something that's nearby and related to what you search for. And the purpose of this is to, it's independent of the internet, so you don't actually need constant connection to Wi-Fi or a data plan in order to actually use this. You can, if you're in the city and you need to use it, you can quickly get it done. Yay for dumb phones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so that is Did you guys say what school you're from? Stony Brook. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up is Food Fight. Is Food Fight, food fight I think they're, they're switching laptops. QR scanner? That's me. So I uh, find QR codes slightly ridiculous, and this is my favorite Tumblr because of that. Um, but I thought there are opportunities to, to take this a little further. So I wrote this little app. Um, and if you have a QR scanner, blink, bring it up now and uh, scan the page. I can scan with my phone. And you'll notice it's changing. There's a reason for that. When you scan, it takes a picture with the webcam right there and posts it to a separate Tumblr and redirects you to that. So you should all be seeing yourselves, assuming this setup is working with a projector. You can see it right here. <laughs> So these are uh, my cat and people scanning last night and that sort of thing. So that's it. <laughs> well done, Chris. Truly, this is a disturbing universe. OK, uh, after that will be the summit. I hope the summit is ready to go. And then please, would stories, Foursquare, RPG, and Crackathon. Great. Crackathon, come on down. You can skim the code of conduct while you're Ready to go? Um, okay, cool. Um, while we get the screen loaded up, my name is Niels. I'm in the public health school up in the main campus. Um, most of the team was from Columbia, but we have one, um, Andy from 
Stevens Institute of Technology in Hoboken. Right, perfect, yeah. Great. Um, so our web app is essentially think of Reddit plus Quora plus Stack Overflow, but for global development. And often what happens in global development is you'll have two, two nonprofits working in villages that are two miles away that are doing. Often what you'll have is two nonprofits that are doing projects that are really related, like bed net distribution, and they'd really benefit from um, sharing resources. And they don't, we don't really have a good communication tool for people in this community. And so essentially what we'll be able to do is provide a forum, basically, and it'll be sort of Reddit style. It'll, you know, you, you get on the front page and you, you're pretty much hit with like the bi world's biggest problems. And we don't have full functionality yet, but you'll be able to click on the world map and we're using the Google Maps API to be able to show, hopefully in real time eventually, all the users that are on, what they're talking about, all the different um, comments and the different forums that people are, people are um, participating in, and this is not working, but you'll be able to zoom in to a particular forum, and you'll be able to start commenting. And what really makes this different is that students and professionals and teachers will be able to publish their sort of intellectual property and not have to go through the entire like scientific publishing industry. Um, we've added some rules here that are not apparent, but essentially it'll be sort of like a voting system and hopefully like we'll have sort of these small communities that are really passionate about certain, um, certain issues. And you know, we're hoping to mine out like really important questions because right now there's a move from what's called the Millennium Development Goals to Sustainable Development Goals. And one thing the UN and a lot of people have pledged is this should be a crowd sourced thing and not just a, a room, back room of experts coming up with goals. Um, so that's sort of what we're trying to aim for. It's really big, but um, we're excited. Okay. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> Next up is stories. Is Foursquare RPG here? All right, you're up next. Hi guys, uh, we are Stories. My name is Griffin and I'm from Cornell. This is my friend Charles, he's from Cornell. And this is my friend Jeff from Columbia. And basically what we wanted to try to do was make a website kind of like Pastebin, but optimized for sharing stories or information about your life through multiple different media. So the, uh, the basic idea is, um, you know, Pastebin or GIFs are great when you want to when you want to sh uh, share some text, but they're not great for readability. And if you really want to share some long form text and let's say you don't have a blog, there's not really a great way to do that. So we made uh, this app called Stories. Uh, basically you just drop a title and your, your text in there, uh, supports Markdown. And then you just hit get link there and you get, you get a link and we, and then you just share that wherever you want. Post it on Twitter, Facebook, send it to your friends, SMS it, whatever. And you can see uh, optimized readability. Uh, and uh, this is actually live right now. If you go to sherrystory.net, uh, you can use it. Okay, thank you very much. Foursquare RPG, are you good to go? Uh, Crackathon, if you're here, please go to the hall. And then loudspeaker and retention, please. Hi guys, um, I'm Jesus Ismael. We come from Puerto Rico to, for, to Hack and Why. Um, we actually made a game, uh, an RPG game with Foursquare, so our name is not very original. Um, basically, what, what we did is in Puerto Rico, Foursquare is not that popular, but we really like it, so we were looking for ways to make it more popular. So uh, we, we developed a, a small RPG. Whenever you check in, you'll get a, a push notification that gets sent to your phone. And when you get it, you can actually fight a monster. And depending on the type of checking, you will get a stat that goes up. And you can actually gain experience and level up your character uh, uh, the more checkings you do. So he's checking into the game, and there you can see your stats. Yeah, all your stats, and basically checkings. And we're going to go four square right now and do check in really fast. So he just does random checking and in a few seconds the server will send the push notification about a battle that's going on. All right. 
Here it is. So we got our notification. We click it, and you automatically design your monster, and that's you. And you have your attack button, and you attack, and you keep winning or run. And for each checking, you get your stats increase. And in the end, you just level up, and your character goes up, and you can eventually like buy stuff and just make your character better by just checking into places. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, all the way from Puerto Rico. Awesome. Next up is Crackathon, and then loudspeakers. Loudspeaker here. So I want to just say, like, you I'm sorry in advance if we break any rules. I can't, as Rob Ford would say, I can't comment on any code of contact that may exist or I have not read. Um, so that, do you guys know who Rob Ford is? No, maybe. Yeah. We're from we're from Waterloo uh, in Canada, so we know who Rob Ford is. He's the mayor of Toronto. He was famously caught on video, drunk in public, urinating in public, and of course doing crack cocaine. Um, he's also up for re-election right now, so we figured we'd make a game, and that game's actually trending on our Canada and our Toronto front page. Um, so we'll we'll get into it. We get get into the get into the game. Yeah. It's robfordthegame.com if you guys want to check it out. So you play as Rob Ford and you collect uh, your drugs and you, uh, you see you have the party score and in the top right there you can't really see it's kind of cut off. There's your uh, public opinion. Now your public opinion goes down over time and your goal is to get as big of a party as you can before your public opinion runs out. If you run into a cop, that lowers your party. If you run into a journalist, that lowers your public opinion. Uh, the best thing, in my opinion, is all of these sound quotes are actual Rob Ford quotes. We didn't doctor them. So the stuff he says, he actually said. And it's going to be running out of time here pretty soon. You can see what happens. I did absolutely nothing wrong. You have been impeached. I did, I did absolutely nothing wrong. And not, and not. So that's our game. Check it out, robfordthegame.com. Great. Yeah. That was pretty much as bad as I feared. Uh, uh, next is loudspeaker, retention, and hack stat. Please, if you would come down to the hall. Thank you. Hello everybody, we are a loudspeaker, and before we begin, I'd like you to take out your laptop or a phone or whatever, turn on location services, and go to that website. Type in your name, whatever. So, loudspeaker is a website that lets you sign into wherever you are, and join a chat room with all the people around you. So let's say you're at a social gathering, like, I don't know, uh, I've never heard of hackathons, maybe you've been to one. <laughs> you can just, uh, just talk to people, and send some information, right? So. <coughs> let's see. Um, so, let's say hey Warren. Oh, so like, do you see us? Do you see the person's name who's uh, who's is smartass there? So we we made it such that if you didn't enter a name, you would be automatically entered as smartass. So um, the idea behind this is that you can kind of have uh, like the social aspect of you know a social network where you're actually near the people that are talking to you. And this is created at every single Foursquare venue. So every time somebody comments, or well, every time somebody goes to a Foursquare venue and then logs into here, they get to post onto the local message board. Yep. And uh, this can be used for anything you want. Like let's say you're in a band and you want to promote your band, you can say, uh, come see my band. Right there, real time, real quick. <laughs> no, wow. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's basically it. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Awesome. What school are you from? Oh. Stony Brook. Stony Brook, Stony Brook, Stony Brook, Stony Brook. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Next up is retention. And after that is Hackstat. Is Hackstat here? Hackstat. Awesome. And Food Fight is ready. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Jared. I'm Paris. And I'm David. Uh, we're from Bergen Academy's high school, and we made retention, which is a at, so I'm terrible at remembering people's names, and if I met you here, I probably don't remember your name. So this app uses spaced repetition, which is an algorithm made by uh, Paul Pimsler to help you remember stuff, help translate it to deep memory by reminding you at certain intervals of time. So with this, we make it easy to, to use that. So you just connect with Facebook. 
and then you can create decks based on, uh, so there's different ways you can import. You can import it from group on Facebook. Uh, here it's fetching all your groups, so you can just click any of these groups and get to, an, and remember all their names. So I chose the Hack BCA organizers group. So it'll remind you at different times when to study it. We'll send uh, email and a text message. So here it, it tells you you have to study. So uh, who is this? Uh, I don't really remember. Oh, it's Ben Klaus. Okay, uh, I didn't remember him. Oh, I know who he is. So that's how it works. I'm just going to continue with this. Uh, yeah, so, and if you want to add a deck, you can also add a custom deck. So we can add a plain, plain deck like normal, just uh, capitals, uh, New Jersey, Trenton, etc. Or you can also create custom ex extensions and it make it actually expandable. So you can write something like uh, reversing the word, and just, just as an example. So then you just create the deck, you can create your own, and you can change it to reverse, and it'll automatically uh, reverse the words so it's much easier to memorize them. And then it'll go through this whole spaced repetition thing so you can memorize it with the least effort possible. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Retention. Is Hackstat ready to go? Yes, hello everyone. So I'm Mehul, I go to NYU, and this is? I'm Ashish, I go to Hafsha. So basically, we like, well, both go to a lot of hackathons, and every, at every hackathon, we think we miss out on the overall hackathon experience. And it starts at the very beginning with, like, this is not more for us, it's more for the host. It starts with the registration. Like when we tried to register for, uh, register for a hackathon when we came in, it was done in an Excel spreadsheet, and he was actually helping out there, like mm -hmm. to check people in, and it was very tedious. So we decided to kind of, take the entire experience and make it better with our app, ha uh, Hackstack. So first thing we decided to do was create a better check-in experience. So for the user, when you come in, all you need to do is have an account on Hackstack, and then when you come in, you go, uh, when you uh, refresh this page, you get a, a code. This is a code that you give in to the per the host, and then they'll put it in, and it'll be automatically registered to the hackathon. So you see your name is added, so like this is your username, last name, and email. So now that you're already at the hackathon and registered, you want to get as much help possible during the hackathon when you need help. And there's no better way to do it right now than Twitter. You just go to Twitter, Twitter and then like uh, tag your amb tag ambassadors and whatnot. But we decided to do it a little better with being, you being able to ask questions. So you could go here, you could see all the questions posted. And if you have a specific question, you could click on ask the question and you could be able to ask the question basically. And be like this. And this is like the body of the question. and tag it. So the more important thing is the tag. So basically, uh, right now, I, I signed up as a tag ambassador, and I'm like, my tag is Node.js. So if there's someone who tags Node.js, and the question was posted, I would get a text on my phone saying, someone needs help with Node.js. So, so he, just, just yeah, he just posted it. a question, and I should get a text at any time now saying that someone needs my help. If and Twilio is cooperating. Yeah, if Twilio is cooperating. And after that is done, and then. <laughs> oh, yeah, actually, I just got the text. Uh, it's right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's right here. It's just like, dude, someone needs you. And then it's basically a link to that question. And, like, basically, after the question and whatnot, we still want to be uh, uh, kept aware of what's going on at the event. So we, we let the host create their own page called uh, the event page. So here's the hack and why. We tell them how many people are there based on the amount of people registered. We tell them the amount of questions on the site right now and all the latest updates. And after this all is done, at the end, you still want to remember what you did, all the projects you did, and have some sort of representation of what you did there. So that's why we have something called the hacker card, where we give you karma points, which is basically if you attend a hackathon, you get five points. And then if you help someone with a question and like you're selected as a best, an best answer, you get a bunch of points. And if you win a hackathon, you get a lot of bunch of points. And this is like kind of a standard way to gauge your hackathon experience in a way and measure it, like how much fun you had and like put a number to it, per se. And that's one. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> 30 balls going after Spectre and Swift in one demo. <laughs> uh, food Fight is up next. Is Food Fight here? Yes. yes. So I'm Chris and this is Dan. We're both from Rutgers. So imagine this. You're in your dorm and you're thinking, oh wow, I'm really hungry. 
And your roommate's just like, I'm really hungry too, let's go order some food. Okay, so you're both really hungry, and you look in your wallets, and then you proceed to look through every single part of your room to realize, oh wait, we're broke college students. We only have enough money to feed one of us. You want pie and your friend wants cake. So there's obviously only one way to sell this, with a food fight. <laughs> I'll let Dan go into the details of this food fight. Uh, so basically, this is just a, um, a simple wrapper script uh, in Python that uh, just takes a game and uses the uh, victor of that game to determine which uh, uh, order in order is uh, processed and who has to pay for it. Uh, uh, so here, I'll just uh, take any old thing here. Say player one wants carrot cake and player two wants fried Oreos. And this is just a simple number guessing game. And but as a demonstration here, we could also hook this into uh, an existing game that we did not make. Um, once again, same thing. 2048. <laughs> I'm trying to lose, but this, you know. You're just too good. <laughs> no. Oh, there we go. So now player two uh, wins again. Okay, that's uh, about it. Okay, so um, that was food fight, which means next must be automated that. punditry, is that right? Don't worry automated about the door. Punditry. Automated yes. punditry. Yeah. Hi everybody, my name is Dan Scarponi. This is Hassler Thurston. Uh, our friend Abdul, Abdul is right there. He worked on it too, but didn't want to come up to school. We are from University of Rochester. And uh, how many of you watch network news or talk radio? Okay, yeah, how many of your parents or grandparents watch that? Okay, a little more people. Anyway. Long story short, if you may have noticed, some of the things they say sound a little bit formulaic, and we thought so too. But can you make what they can you make an AI bot that says the same things that they say? So we thought we did. And since we've never said no to a bad idea before, hey. So we have opinion bot. So far, we have two implementations of it: Rush Limbot and Michael Bloombot. Fed respectively copious amounts of Rush Limbot's text transcripts from his radio show and MSNBC articles. And for you today, we have a program that lets them argue with each other. And as they argue with each other, their corpus texts gradually inflict, inflict their own opinions into each other so that they don't change what they think, but they do gradually stay on topic, just like real pundits. And without any further ado, it is about to begin. Rush Limbaugh will be the first speaker. This is generated using a trigram hidden Markov model. Um, hidden, of course, so that the real Rush Limbaugh can't see what we're doing. Uh, <laughs> and as you notice, uh, Rush Limbaugh is probably smarter than the real Rush Limbaugh, given that he's taking a lot of time. Uh, <laughs> Although he does not know how to use punctuation. That's true. You know, you win some, you lose some. Now, we are, unfortunately, we're, uh, ooh, who wins? Precisely. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> if you have any other strange questions, if you want to see it, send me an email and we can talk to you about it. Thank you. Next up is Justin de Guzman, then Hungry Mate, then Ticket Catch. Those are all of the ones that were actually submitted through uh, Hacker League. Uh, if you either didn't submit through Hacker League or you like didn't this. submit at all, yeah. but you want to demo, uh, after Hungry Me, please come over to the exit sign and we'll get you on stage. Hey guys, I'm Justin. I go to NYU. So before I begin, uh, who here wants to run their own startup one day? Raise your hand. So a lot of you. And I'm just like you. Ever since I was young, I've always been trying to find ways to make money. 
Some of you probably had lemonade stands or sold candy out of your locker. I was different. I bought and sold things on Craigslist. Why my parents would let a nine-year-old kid use Craigslist, I have no idea. I searched Craigslist page after page to find opportunities to buy and sell, to buy low and sell high. This process was very time consuming and I knew there had to be a better way. That's why I made Craig's Flip. Craig's Flip allows you to easily find opportunities on Craigslist to buy low and sell high. I'll show you an example. Let's say you wanted to make money off a laptop. laptop. You would enter the item name, then you would choose a city. I'm from San Francisco, so I'll choose San Francisco. And then you would input a reasonable price range. And then you click flip, and it shows you a list of opportunities to buy low and sell high. In the first result, someone wants to buy a MacBook Air for $1,000, and someone else wants to sell for $625. If you took advantage of this opportunity, you can make a quick profit of $375. Craigslist makes it easy to contact the buyers and sellers. You simply click a button, and as you can see here, it populates a custom email message to the buyers and sellers. All you need to do is click send. If you do this, for all of the query results, you can make over $1,300. A simple tool like Craigslist allows anyone to work hard and make good money. Thank you very much. So I think we're up to Hungry Me. And please, anyone else, if anybody else hasn't demoed, please come on down to the hall. Okay. So our project is Hungry Me. I'm Lauren. And I'm Aftab. Hi. And we both go to Columbia. And so, you know, when we're sitting in our rooms after a long day of class, what do we say to ourselves? All right, we're really hungry, but just too lazy to take the effort to, you know, go really look for food. So we, so we tried to come up with a solution that would enable laziness as much as possible. So basically, if you put in your current address, and it also works with location services, um, it basically can recommend to you uh, food or drink uh, based on some preferences. And it's a good way to, in our, uh, in our conception, um, explore what your uh, options are for nearby restaurants without too much effort. Okay. So the first thing that happens is that we put in our home address. So before I loaded uh, Shapiro Sesper, because um, I set that as my home address before. So we'll just do it now. Which is this building, Sesper. by the way. Sesper. Sesper. Um, and uh, what this app will do is that it will use uh, the Google Maps API to figure out uh, the GPS location of this and determine whether we're at home or if we're at we're outside and if we're at home it will uh, give us options for delivery so say I wanted some Chinese food um, it will list the restaurants that will deliver and if I click on one of them it will show me uh, the delivery.com website with the menu um, so suppose I want uh, to have a drink and I'm at home it will show me all the places that will deliver beer and wine to my place. And if I click on it, it'll go to delivery.com so I can order it. Um, but suppose I live somewhere else. Say I live in Massachusetts. Uh, and I'm hungry. Um, but my app will know that I'm here based on my location. And it'll say, you're out and about, so here are some foods near you. And this uses the Foursquare API. Uh, so if I wanted Indian food, uh, it'll show me the nearest Indian restaurant. And I can click on it. And this will link to a map uh, that shows directions from where I am right now to Rody Roll, which isn't very good. <laughs> but if I'm thirsty and I'm out and about, uh, I can click on I'm thirsty and I can choose what kind of bar I want to go to. Um, so say I want to go to this kind of bar. Uh, it'll show me the Five Lambs ta Tavern and if I click on it, it'll show me a map uh, for how to get there. Yep, and of course all results are sorted by you know what's trending, what's most popular. So basically we found that we thought that this was a good uh, way to encourage you know exploring the nearby restaurants with you know your friends with minimal involvement. So. Yep, that's it. Thank you. 
Okay, next up is Ticket Catch. Again, this is the last demo that's on the schedule. Anyone else that wants to demo, please come over here. Chris or I will ask you what your name is and what the name of your demo is. We know about you, Ty, so don't worry, we won't forget. All right, so while we finish getting this set up, uh, I'll get started. Uh, so I'm Quentin, this is Sid, we're both at Columbia. Uh, we came into this wanting to do something with NYC Open Data. There's a lot of cool data sets on there. So we found what we thought was something that would be awesome, which was basically an API of all parking tickets and traffic violations in the city uh, by license plate number. So we thought a great hack would be to basically uh, have you enter your license plate, and if you have any outstanding tickets, we'll basically annoy you via Twilio until you pay them. Uh, but we ran into a few problems, which Sid will tell you about. Yeah, so um, basically what this app does is you... I'll, I'll just go through the app first. Um, so you just type in your license plate number, uh, what state you're in, and your phone number, and we'll text you incessantly until you've paid your any parking tickets or speeding tickets that you have outstanding. Um, so you know, I'll go ahead and click submit. This is actually um, this license is plate number. Yeah. Yeah. So it turns out that like all speeding ticket and parking ticket data is available um, on the internet. Um, so this is just someone's license plate number who happens to have some unpaid tickets, um, and. Um, as you can see, um, well, actually, you can't see, but I just got a bunch of texts uh, about their parking tickets. Because um, this person got four tickets in one week, so they had a really bad week at some point in like early March. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, we first tried using NYC OpenGov, but there's some parking tickets that were issued where it said the issue date was in like 2069 yeah. um, and really all bad. kinds of bad data. But we eventually found a website that allows you to actually get a list of parking, days, uh, parking tickets that you have outstanding. Um, and pay them there, so that's it. So the three of you who have cars, sign up and you can get notified if you ever get a parking ticket. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, it seems that a bunch of projects actually did submit, but it came up as false for submitting, so uh, we do have a handful of projects still, still to go. Next up is Hipster vs. Machine. Okay, hey guys, I'm Josh. And I'm Katie. Uh, we're both from Rutgers. And for our hack, we made hipster versus machine. So we were looking through the APIs that were available, and we were thinking, OK, so we have Etsy, which is all handmade and vintage stuff. And then we've got stuff that's being 3D printed in the future at Shapeways. So let's, we wanted to see what people, if people had a preference between those, these two things. So what that happens is you go to this page, which is on localhost, so you can't, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> you go to this page, and it brings up a random product from Etsy and a random product from Shapeways. It doesn't tell you which one is which, and then you click on which one you think you prefer, and it goes through a few and sees w if you prefer uh, generally one type over the other. And the two dudes on the bottom fight as you're clicking on different things between the two ones. There's like 10 of these, just give it a sec. So yeah, and then at the end, it gives you the score, and it tells you how many uh, the list of items from each store in case you want to go buy anything that you saw. So obviously, we use the Etsy API and um, scraped Shapeways because they don't have a way to get other products just to print your own. So whatever. That's it. Thank you. Awesome. Did you say where you're from? Uh, yeah, we're both from Rutgers. Thank you. OK, so I think the last team is Hotspots. I'll, I'll use this last time to also thank our in-kind donations. So um, you all who stayed through the night know that we had some great meals provided uh, by a number of people. Uh, so our in-kind donors supporting this hackathon were Delivery.com, General Catalyst, ISOC New York, um, thanks for the videography, Joe's Coffee, Lob, Red Bull, SynGrid, and Squishables. Okay, please fire one in. Hey guys, uh, thanks for being such a great crowd. So we're hotspots, and essentially what, we, what we're doing here is that if you have nothing to do, we help you figure out what there is to do around you. Uh, and essentially the way we do that is we use two items, two pieces of data. We use your geodata, so that's where you are, and the actual content of you know, what you're talking about, what's actually happening. Um, but instead of using, it, uh, using that information like most social networks do, uh, using one, like Facebook for example, uh, we actually use it through three different social networks and we use that data to combine and figure it out where you are. So for example, we use tweets from Twitter we, and from that we use our, we figure out your location on Foursquare and then from that we figure out pictures that exist uh, of that event or venue on Instagram. And essentially it gives you a complete feeling of what's happening in your surroundings and the way we do that is we create a heat map. So 
as this pops up, you can see you can move around and you'll, you'll see that there's a lot of events happening. For example, tweets are being sent around and you know hashtags are being uh, put on certain uh, statements. So this basically connects everything that's happening in this area. And it updates ever so often uh, when you move uh, the map. Uh, and essentially, it gives you these markers that show you uh, specific information. It gives you every, uh, all the information kind of in the most recent time frame, so like two to four hours. So it'll tell you exactly what's happening in your area. And when you click on one of these, it shows all the recent tweets that uh, were shown in that area. Uh, and also pictures, perhaps, that were relevant to that. Um, you know, the goal eventually is to make this a little bit more dynamic. Uh, as tweets are coming in, this will be pushed down, or as photos are being taken and uh, relevant hashtags are included, the photos will be pushed in. Uh, but that's, uh, that's the general goal. And uh, it leaves you with an impression of what you can do in your area and uh, how you can get involved uh, in that time frame. Thank you. All right, and we have three bonus demos. Next up is Sprints. All right, hey guys, uh, my name is Billy. I'm from Rutgers, and uh, this is Sprints. Uh, so basically, I got this idea from my friend uh, Paul, and basically, we were we were thinking about the. Uh, have any of you heard of Spritz? It's this uh, speed reading program where basically it displays the words like in line. Uh, we basically wanted to, to write something that was um, sort of a typing version of that. Um, midway through, we realized that this is sort of impossible just because you're you're very limited on how fast your fingers move. Um, so it's not much, but I ended up just making a small little thing that's basically just a, you know, a typing tutorial, essentially. So you know, you just start it up, and then um, you just type away. It'll fill in words as you go. Um, and then at the end, it'll display like you know, different stats, words per minute, average word length, and uh, how many mistakes you made. So you see the timer in the upper, in the upper right. Uh, you see the mistakes in the upper left. And yeah, pretty simple. That's it. Thank you very much. Only two left. Uh, let's see, I think, or maybe three next. The next one is Video Shazam. Is that right? Yes. Awesome. Uh, these teams will be competing for a number of prizes. Uh, briefly, the, first, the third place prize is $333. The second place prize is $666. And the first place prize is $999. Uh, there will be also prizes for the largest number of APIs used, the funniest, the most technically impressive, the best UI, the best hardware hack, I guess we don't have any of those, and the eight breaker, which I'll explain later because we're about to get started. You guys ready to go? Hi, my name is Ian. This is Jesse. We're yeah. both from Rutgers. Um, we like Shazam because it's cool. If you guys are familiar with it, or if you're not, it's, um, it's an app that you hold up your microphone to a song that's playing and it'll identify which song is playing. And so we wanted to kind of adapt that idea towards movies. And so the way we did that was, um, well, you take, ideally, you take a picture with your phone, and um, you crop it, and then upload the picture to our website, and we'll identify which movie it's from. So here's an example. Jesse is cropping this image and saving it. We have to build our own database for this, because there's a lot of frames. So we went frame by frame, saved every single one, used uh, this algorithm called dehash, which just hashes the image and creates a fingerprint of that frame. And so we cross-reference it with every, we, we, we hash the picture that Jesse's uploading now and reference it with every hash in the database. So it's kind of inefficient right now, but it looks like it identified it um, correctly. correctly. Yeah, these are the top five uh, images uh, that the algorithm thinks it should be. And uh, we could like upload more, right? So like, you know. Uh, there are three videos in the database right now, so. So this one's from Malcolm in the Middle. And we're uploading this one. And da -da. Yeah, it seemed to identify it. And we got an Easter egg. Where, you know, we're tired and you know, we want Red Bull, so why not just upload like an image of some Red Bull? <laughs> and then... It'll tell you where you can get some Red Bull, <laughs> courtesy of uh, Foursquare. Right, thank you.
Okay, so our last, well, let's make sure. Is there anyone that hasn't demoed besides where the party at that wants to demo? Okay, so this is our last demo. I'm going to ask the five judges. Maybe, Derek, you're allowed to bring a guest. Uh, to follow me out that door, we're going to make a bunch of lefts and there's a judge's room with maybe even some food in it. Uh, last up is where the party at? All right. Hi, everybody. Um, my name's Karan. Uh, just a little preface. I just transferred into ComSci. I've only been coding for about like three, four months now. So this is obviously an unfinished uh, project, but it's my first hackathon, so I wanted to just show you all what I made. Um, first, I want to give a shout out to the two people that helped me, uh, Andrew and Raymond. Uh, they had to leave, and I was the last one here, so I'm just going to be talking to you guys about it. Uh, so, I'm from Rutgers, so one thing we're known for is, obviously we like to party, and the one thing, <laughs> he knows, so the one thing um, I hear every time I go on campus is, you know, where's the party at, where is it, nobody knows. So uh, essentially I came up with the idea saying, what if uh, we used Foursquare uh, in order to like check into parties? So let's say I have a house, right, and you guys are trying to come into my party. So what I would do is, I'd go and I'd make... Uh, I do. So I'd set up something like this, where I put the type of music that I was that I'd be playing, uh, type in the ratio that I need, and if there's a cover charge or not. And I'd also put in like the different features I have, like if I'm having like pong tables, you know, how many, uh, what kind of uh, booze I have, you know, hard alcohol, jungle juice, all that stuff. And then by using Foursquare, you guys can actually find based on this what parties are around the area. And I had this with Rutgers in mind, so obviously there'd probably be three or four that would come up, and then you can obviously check and see if you can actually get in. That way it uh, gets rid of that. And then, yeah, so it's really fun, and uh, yeah, that's all I got. Thank you, guys. Okay. Okay, Hack and Why wouldn't be possible without the uh, energetic participation of all these students from all these awesome schools. Great to have people here from as south as Puerto Rico, as east as Stony Brook, and as west as Pittsburgh, I think, and as north as Canada. Uh, I think that was a reward. Okay, so uh, exeunt judges. Uh, so the judges are now going to start judging, and as per tradition, Hack and Why is going to have a few minutes now for some community announcements. Is Alex here? Alex Satz, I think, had a community announcement. Okay, so absent uh, community announcements. I think we have one other demo. Taizo, you're on deck. Are you ready to come demo? Okay, Taizo. Taizo is going to present something he created in Scratch. Taizo, do you want to say what this is? No. <laughs> because if you remember the... Can you say the title? Oh, you. Okay, I'll tell you the name first. What's the name? Uh. The Battle of Pokemon. All right, so Taizo is going to demo the Battle of Pokemon. He was our technical ambassador in Scratch, as you can see. If you had any questions about Scratch, you can come ask him. Yes, I do. You know everybody Pokemon Pokemon? That's where Sawdow happened. Bam! <laughs> That's just recording. And that's it. And then the bush performs an infinite random walk. <laughs> Taizo, did you have any assistance there? You want to you give a shout out to Swift or anybody else who helped you? No. All right, so to be fair, Taizo was more the product guy, and I was sort of the CTO of that. Uh, <laughs> but I got some help. Um, also, of course, we want to thank all the sponsors that made this uh, possible, uh, including the engineering school, which has hosted us. And I'll tell you honestly. Show the code. Oh, show the code. Sorry, Taizo, you're right. I should actually show the code to that. All right, I'll, f I'll pull up the code. Thank you. Um, or how about the, uh, the characters? I'll show, th I'll, sh I'll show the sprites in the code. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so all these, all these sponsors made it possible, including the engineering school, which honestly did a whole lot of work getting this done. Also, all the people who participated in making the Hack and Why Masters program this year in our last Hack and Why hackathons. We also had a series of lectures um, from members of the tech community. This was organized by several of the Hack and Why alumni. Uh, we had a great series of, of talks from Hack and Why alumni here. Uh, Andrew Satz wanted to make a community announcement. Is he in the house? Yeah, we got it. All right, Andrew, can you bring it? Actually, substitute. But awesome. Whoever's representing Andrew, please, you please bring up your community announcement. Thank you, Tyler. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Daniel Giganti from uh, CORE on campus. We're a Columbia organization of rising entrepreneurs. And um, 
We're excited to tell you about an event on April 11th, this, this upcoming Friday, Startup Columbia. Um, I'm just going to bring up the website for you. It's, we have right now, there's six organizations involved in organizing it. We're bringing in Drew Houston, the founder of Dropbox. Um, President Bollinger is going to be there. Uh, we have Shazi Bizrum from um, what was it? Modern Family. We have, oh, right now I think there's 54 speakers. Um, another huge part of it is the, um, we have the, the challenge, right? So we started with 150 teams. This is going to be the third round. We're now down to six teams. So it's, um, it's a really exciting event. Right now, if you go to the site and you go to registration, tickets are about $35 for students, which we understand is, you know, it's a, it's a lot to ask for students. However, we're having a special promotion coming up tomorrow at 10 o'clock. If you go to the Eventbrite page, which you can get to at, well, I'm on it right now, but this is easier, bit.ly slash Startup Columbia. Using that, at 10 o'clock p.m. tomorrow, we're going to have tickets on sale for $10. Now, there's only 100 tickets, so we encourage you to get out there because we've been, people we have right now, we've, we've been contacting groups and people are waiting to, to get their hands on these. So, hope to see you all there. It's going to be great. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Now, uh, I've mentioned several times the Hack and Life Fellows Program. Uh, many of you are coming from far away and you probably haven't heard of the Hack and Life Fellows Program for, before. So I asked some of the Hack and Life Fellows if they would be willing to come uh, say a, a few words about the Hack and Life Fellows Program. So if you're a Hack and Life Fellow and you'd be willing to come up and say a bit about what the Hack and Life Fellows Program is, please do come up. Or if you'd be willing to just stand here on stage and <laughs> with shock and awe. I think it's a testament to the community that Hack and Y fosters that you see so many alumni here. We love this community and it's because of the Hack and Y program. A lot of people, they go out into their field and they try to make these professional connections, but we live together, we hack together, we have worked on projects together, we have given each other personal advice, like this is more than a professional connection, we feel connected to each other and this is an amazing community. So Hack and Y offers talks uh, twice a week uh, with awesome people. But for me, like the people that I live with, they're even more awesome. Sorry if there's one of the speakers around here. Uh, but yeah, that's, you get a new family when you join Hack and Y. So imagine uh, how much fun uh, we had in this weekend in the Hackathon. Yes, everyone? Woo yeah. So Hack and Y is like that, except it's for a whole summer. So you'll be with all your peers and you know hacking together and I think it's a really great experience and a really great environment and you'll like learn so much. If uh, some of you are new and not familiar at all with the fellows program, it's basically a summer long internship in New York City with a startup of some kind. I was at Kickstarter and maybe some other people can say where they were. Um, but you're living in housing with all the other fellows. You get to hear talks uh, a couple times a week and go to events. And it's basically, you know, as I said, a, a hackathon, but for a whole summer. Um, so I hope everyone considers uh, applying for next summer. And uh, I think it's a great community and you can't do anything better with the summer. Hi. Um, so I did my fellowship two years ago and um, I still talk to these people pretty much daily. Um, it's probably, you're, you're a hacker and you want to solve hard problems, which means things are going to get hard. But um, Hack and Why, you know, it provides you from the get-go this awesome community of people, this awesome network and all the resources, whether you're trying to do a startup or get a PhD, um, they'll be there for you and help you solve hard problems. So you guys should totally do Hack and Why, solely because you are guaranteed to know someone at every single meetup for the rest of your life in New York City. Also, like every startup you go to, everyone will know the name. It's pretty cool. And I can confirm I went to Hack and Y with Jen same year. I still talk to Jen. She's not lying. We talk sometimes. Okay. Now and then. <laughs> yeah, come on. Hey, uh, so I don't have a whole lot to add to what everyone's been saying because so many people have already talked. Uh, but I will say that Hack and Y was easily like the best summer of my life. Um, if I could do it again, I totally would. Uh, and, you know, even though I don't talk to Jen much, we, <laughs> <laughs> we fight a lot. Yeah, we um, fight. Yeah, we, there's not a whole lot of talking. It's mostly physical 
combat. Um, uh, but we pulled, and people thought I would be Gerard in a boxing match. But people are wrong because, like, Reagan was elected in Bush and stuff, right? So. <laughs> So yeah, like Gerard said, we're getting towards the end, so there's not a lot I can say without repeating something. But yeah, Hack and Y was easily one of the coolest summers I've ever had. Um, you learn just so much just by having an internship and everyone that you, li you live with. You're housing in New York with some of the uh, best hackers and you can just learn so much that summer. And you know, New York's awesome, so there's that. I think it's really cool that everybody gets to work at uh, so many different startups uh, because then when you come back and hang out um, in the evening you get to talk about all the crazy innovative things that these guys are doing that you would just like never know about without having a community like this. So it's a really cool program. Um, so a lot's been said, but the people, are, <laughs> the people are definitely the best part of Hack and Y. Like you live with 40 really badass hackers. Um, at night you come back, you hack with them, you talk about like the crazy problems they're solving at all these amazing startups. And it's just a really, really cool program. So if you have the opportunity, go to apply.hackandy.org and like spend your summer doing Hack and Y. So aside from all the awesome stuff these guys said, um, you can basically treat it as a summer of a preview of what it's like to live in the city and like learn the subway system, learn how to get around, <laughs> do everything you would do if you actually lived in the city, but for the whole summer. It's pretty awesome. Okay, thanks for explaining that. Okay, so, um, the other thing that I wanted to say during our, our time together before the judges come back with their judgments and their judgifying is that um, all of the other community that makes this possible is not only the coders, but the great New York City startups that come and demo their APIs and hang out as technical ambassadors. Uh, pretty much all of these startups are also hiring, so Delivery.com, DigitalOcean, Etsy, Foursquare, HandyBook, MongoDB, OrderIn, Shapeways. They wanted to make sure that all of you knew that uh, they're interested in working with you in the future. The Hack and Y MVP is not here to get a public thanks, but let's everyone thank Whitney Green. Okay, first prize, most APIs, Fiesta House gets a $200 gift certificate to a startup or company. Fiesta House, come on. <laughs> Best UI, Violet Food. Yeah. They didn't win something else. They were going to get uh, Best Barefoot Demo. This guy's not wearing shoes. <laughs> Most Technical, Tunnel. Noting we made an exception here. He didn't use an API that was demoed yesterday. All right, eight major QR scanner. I think this one we probably could uh, predict funniest crackathon. Okay, then we added a few prizes here. Uh, the best pitch who will win a license to Keynote is Facebook Invaders. <laughs> All right, best command line 
uh, demo, Automated Punditry. students who organize the events and hackers like yourselves who come to them. Um, so one of the things that Major League Hacking does is we support the events by providing these medals to the first, second, and third place uh, teams at all of our events. So we're really excited to, to get these to everybody. Awesome. Cool. Okay, so third place. Um, let me say the whole thing before you get excited because you might recall there were two that seemed very similar. Mode.io 2048, that's the multiplayer version Nice. There you go. Congratulations. Congratulations. You know, this hat is going to, yeah, there you go. Sweet. There you go. Go ahead and see. There you go. All right, come here. $333. In second place, interesting, the, the most uh, benevolent uh, uh, demo, and also the prize is 666. Uh, 2048 against cancer. Congratulations, my friends. Uh, all that money goes to that kid, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One more round of applause for Tizo. Yeah. 